All right. So welcome to today's Call of Aid webinar. My name is Dean, and I am a part of our Call of Aid team, and I will be today's presenter about Call of Aid setting guide. So here's our email, support at callofaid.com. Should you need any help from us when using or when you have any inquiries about um, Call of Aid? So you, do you guys have any problem listen, hearing me or have any um, trouble? Just please type it inside the chat so we can see that you have no problem whatsoever. So this is Call of Aid's home screen and I would assume that either you're completely new or you're somehow more used to Call of Aid. So before we actually begin on setting up Call of Aid, let me just quickly show you the differences between uh, an administrator and a normal purchase account. So if you go over your mouse over in the top right and click Update My Profile, it takes you to a screen where you can edit your detailed information. So the important thing to note is on the left-hand side, we have the menus to input your domain and your names and position divisions and so on. But the left-hand side is really only for the administrators. Normal users don't see the left-hand side at all. As for the right-hand side, this is for everybody. So even administrator and normal users have all these information. So what is the difference, you might ask? So this left lower, lower left corner, so administrator can set this. And when new users are joining Call of Aid in your domain, these will be used as a default setting. But these are not locked in, so you can change the setting. I mean, users can change the setting to suit their own needs. So let's begin our process on setting up Call of Aid in the beginning. So before we do that, let's click this gear icon on the left. It's the admin menu. It's this menu icon is only available to the administrator accounts. And we'll see more about that. So when you click the admin menu, the first thing you see is a calendar and a Call of Aid's logo where you can check your version of your Call of Aid um, licenses and your expiration dates the total number of licenses that you possess and the total number of users activated. So in the calendar, you can check um, the Call of Aid webinar schedule. You can see that we have one right now. And this, will, this is always updated and we will be sending um, reminders too. So keep an eye out for those things. So what is the first thing you do when you want to set up Call of Aid and get your business going? So you have to hover your mouse on the left on this menu and settings will come up. So the domain setting is the first thing you want to look at. So when you click the domain settings, you see three items on the top here, company name, Google Apps Admin, and the document manager. So the company name is your Google Apps domain and Google Apps Admin. I mean, the company name is from your Google Apps for Work domain name and your Google Apps admin is also from the Google Apps um, for Work super admin account. It's automatically put in here. Now as for the document manager, it's um, document manager is the manager in Call of Aid who takes care of your documents. So basically what happens is all the submitted and processed documents by the users in the domain are centralized to the Call of Aid folder in the document manager's Google Drive. And it doesn't have to be the same account as the Google Apps Super Admin account, but it is um, recommended to keep them same because it is easier to centralize and manage documents. You can change the, um, the user for this document manager, but it is highly advisable to assign somebody in the start and um, keep that person in the place because if you change a document manager in between um, your business, decentralized documents are not automatically transferred and it could be burdensome to move all these um, older documents to the new document manager folder. And we are on the bottom, we have the custom logo. You can um, 
upload custom images which will be automatically resized and this will go up here and or you can just use the Google Apps for Work logo by clicking this button here. When you make all the changes, you have to click Save Settings to apply the changes. So the next important thing and probably the most important setting element is the Sync and Update menu. So why is this so important, you could ask, and it's because Colivate is fully integrated with your Google Apps account. So you need to sync every time you make changes to these items in your Google Apps for work. So to briefly explain, these three, number two, three, and four, the, these are items are from your Google Apps for work organization chart, users, and groups. So if you make add or remove users from your Google Apps for work or make some changes to organization in your organization chart or change groups, you have to click all these sync buttons so that the changes are applied to Colivate and it works flawlessly back and forth. As for the document template, we offer a very um, nice solution for the document template, but you have to create one from Colivate then it work, works flawlessly, there's no extra steps. But however, if you already have a document in your Google Docs and say you create a document and you put it in your Google Drive's um, Colibate template folder, it's this one. So user template is for individual ones and it's only visible and usable by you. But administrators can create a shared template and when you, when you create one from Colibate, it is directly saved into this Colibate template folder. However, if you create a template from Google Docs and manually put it in this folder, then you have to come to this menu again and click Sync button. Uh, so it is uploaded in, in the uh, shared template menu of our Colibate. So always remember, if you make any changes to Google Apps for work, um, in your um, portal, the admin portal folder, you have to uh, come back here and sync all the changes. The third menu we're going to look at is uh, manage groups. So groups is something similar yet a little bit different from Google Groups. So Google Groups doesn't allow um, assigning group email to these organizations in in your Google Apps for work. So, but here, if you use Colivate, you can assign groups email to each of your organization, which is a little bit more detailed and separated. So you can uh, manage your groups and their groups email more um, delicately, so to say. But you, if you make changes to, group, to the group's email, you have to go back to the sync option and sync the groups menu because normally how it works is everything is synced from Google Apps for, for work to Colivate. But as for this group's email, you have to make changes in Colivate first and then go back. So these information are sent to Google Groups. And only if you have done all these steps, then, then you can use the... Um, the carbon copy function of Colivate. And the next menu we're going to look at is the user management. So when you go to the user management menu, you can see the number of licenses and the activated users, uh, just as you could see it from the admin's main menu. And we can also see the organization chart from here. So what's important is you can see the user IDs and their display names, but what's really important is that you can give admin privileges or activate the activate users and give security levels. So this is how it's done. So for instance, there's this demo three account. Now I can assign security levels from one to five, one being the highest. And how it works is if, it's, if you assign a security level of one to a document, only a user with a security level of one can view it. So if, if there's document level two, only one and two can view it and users with level three, four, or five can't see it. And the activation status is, so if you, if you purchase 10 Colivate licenses, 
then you have 10 users from Google Apps for Work. You have to activate them from here so that the licenses are activate, activated and the users can start using Colibri. And as for the privileges, if you give a user an admin privilege, then a user can access this admin menu on the left. So if you have um, a need for a manager who can um, make all these changes necessary for the new um, employees or something like that, then you should give a admin privilege to a um, <clears throat> necessary person. And the next menu, and this is really important, so tagging here we have tags menu, and tagging is one of those features that make Colivate really special. So there are individual tags on the left here in gray color, and there are shared tags. So individual tags are created by you, and it's only usable by um, yourself. However, for the shared tags, are only created and managed by administrators. So if you create these, you can see it from your home screen in yellow and you can apply it directly. So if you go back to the shared tags menu. So there are two ways of creating and managing um, shared tags. You can move your individual tags to the domain tags by clicking it and clicking this arrow. Or you can add one directly by clicking the plus and um, just inputting it and clicking enter then it's, you can see that it's created right here. And most importantly, you can disable domain shared tags. For example, in our this is our test account, so there's too many shared tags, and it may create clutter, and maybe not all the users need a shared tag, then you can turn it off for the other users. And next important menu to look at is our workflow menu. So, if you go to your workflow menu, there are this, all these options that you can enable or disable for the users. So the first one is the signatures. So when you process a document, like when somebody submits a document and you approve or decline it, the signatures will appear if enabled this menu. And comments are also available at the um, moment of your processing the document. It's all really easy to understand. And delegation is used when there's different people among different workflow levels. But if, for instance, say the final reviewer is away, but he can't check it, and process has to go on anyways, then if you have this option enabled, the first person in the, um, the workflow chain can delegate the process and approve or decline the document for the other people. And it's really convenient in such situations and as for the parallel approval option so if there's five people in the first level of workflow chain then if with this option enabled if only one out of all these many people in one level of your workflow if one person agrees to it then you can move on now oops now if you need unanimity to for something to process, say a really important document, then you will have to disable this option by clicking reject when disagree. So it has to go through a rigorous um, review. The enable key permission menu allows um, privileges to the documents that reviewers originally had maintained after even the approval. So when the document processing is all finished, if you turn it off, um, the submitters and reviewers will not be able to view it except for the document manager. So turning this option on will enable more flexible uh, management of your documents, for instance, editing it after the submission. But if you want uh, more centralized control, then you might want to disable this option here. The recipient option, the CC and group CC email, you can turn it on and off. And all these are viewed um, at the workflow menu and reset edit process. So submitters can, for instance, you submitted a wrong document or made mistakes. Now, if you don't want to edit it or you can't edit it, then you can either um, edit the process by changing the reviewers if you put wrong reviewers in the workflow chain or just cancel the, um, the process whatsoever and then start from scratch again. And there's save settings and cancel settings, which is, is it to understand? 
and there it is for document related menus here. So document category, you can create a title and sorting order. And you can see here we have created several um, test category. So you can change, you can create whatever you want and put a sorting order. And I'll briefly show you what it looks like. So in a doc, in your documents, there are, um, so for instance, if you have a document, then there you can have the tags here, but you can also see there's general QA quotation request, contract, and so on. So you can change this to organize your documents in a very easy way. You can just briefly see what category your document belongs to. So there's that and doc document numbering policy. So just on the new screen, you saw that um, there were documents in gray title and then one in green color. So what this does is when you submit a document for processing and its ownership is transferred to the document manager and it is numbered. So you can change the numbering rules by using these commands below. So you can enter um, company code, team name, um, date by using various commands this year, this year full, this month, day, and number. So auto increment number. So it would be if it's created today, then it'll have a date of today and number one, and it'll increment by one. If, if the date changes, it resets to one. So there's user company, template alliance, alias, and other menus. So you can just experiment with it and create a system where you can recognize when and um, how this document was created immediately. The next menu is the document security, as I just talked about in the admin um, user management menu. So you can assign all these document security levels from the user management, but if you can just turn it off. So you can see here that It's not, we don't really have a numbered um, document right now, but as an administrator, you can give uh, security levels to these documents, but you can just turn it off, turn this um, menu off from the document security menu here. And we have the docs template, the shared template I just talked about. So you can create and share templates from here or just edit them by clicking on the document. You can um, delete the template or modify the files. So what template does is it contains all the um, reviewers information and the files and contents and even for the um, tags. So when you create a really well created um, template, you can just click it and it opens up with all the reviewers and uh, formats and you just enter the details and submit it. It's really easy step, maximizes your efficiency in work and effectiveness too. And lastly, um, this is really recently added function to Colivate. So what is this? Is This changes your UI, customizes it for your users. So here we have reports and Google shortcut and upload. So Google shortcut and upload is set to on. So you can see that upload menu is on the left here. And Google shortcut is this but this um, drop down menu on the top right. But you can't see the reports because it's off. It's supposed to be here. It um, briefly shows you the activities of Colivate and, and it kind of summarizes your activities in Colivate. What's more important is the label management. So you can see that there's home and there, there's process menu on the top. And you can select a language to customize. So what this does is it changes the name for these UIs you see all around. So if you don't like certain facts, so if you don't like the, um, the term agree, it, but you would actually um, prefer approve, then you can just click 
here and then type prove and save and it'll be changed. So if, if some people find it difficult to use call of it because of the terms or the characteristics of the terms of the UI we have, it doesn't really suit your domain, then you can edit it to your needs and have a really uh, more smoother and more comfortable user experience. And um, we have a t um, tutorial videos on very simple setup, which is not as long as today's webinar, but it's really simple to get Colvid going, and we you can view it in our um, in our Colvid YouTube channel. And so this is all we have prepared for the Colvid setup tutorial webinar today. And if you have any questions, you can start asking them on the chat, or you can turn your mic on and ask us directly too. Any questions or inquiries or concerns? So um, Christy asked a question about the usage of Spanish. And Dean, could you show her oh, yes. about so if you the go language to update, setting? Update my profile screen. I think it's currently in beta. So we have the language here and language here, this is for the default setting. So if you click in, we have a Spanish, and it's in beta, so, and I'm not a Spanish speaker, so I'm not really sure how good it is, but uh, I guess you can see from here, it's not perfect. Yes, um, yep, it's not currently, um, 100% translated, but if, um, I think if you're in dire need of Spanish language UIs, we can um, contact our developers and accelerate the process, and maybe we can concert, consult our bosses. And, um, yep. And I think, Christy, you can also change the name of some menus and buttons in Spanish from the English and custom setting that our presenter showed. Could you show that one more time, Dean? The process yes, of changing um, the name up. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's really wrong to actually even ask you to do it yourself, but if you are really in need to change things your, to yourself, then you can just... Um, so, for instance, here we have blog. So I changed this to uh, Google+, Plus just for a, a demo's sake, and click Save. And if I refresh the page, then you can see that the blog, which was blog, it's now changed to Google+. Plus. So if you really need to start, use Call of Eight. And then, yeah, and it's, if our development cannot make it to your schedule, but if you really need to use Call of Eight, then you can make some of the changes so that um, you can start using Call of Eight right up. Yep, um, any other? You can um, turn on your mic if you want and just speak to us directly, or you can uh, chat to us on your chatting screen. And also, if you have any questions um, regarding Colivate, please email us at supportcolivate.com or use this chatting menu in the bottom right. It'll um, most of us are online, so we'll get, we can get back to you in a few minutes or immediately if you need any help or if you have any inquiries. Are there any other of you who have any questions for today's webinar or any other questions regarding Colivate? Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> 